celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 for this inauguration day begins with the Great Litany. The Great Litany is found on page 148 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation, good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity, good Lord, deliver us from all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good Lord, deliver us from all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By thy agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest, and to draw all humankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the incoming President and Vice President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, 
so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants, and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all humankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. Joseph the worker for spouse, of St. Paul the Apostle, patron of this parish, and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, who hast made all peoples of the earth for thy glory to serve thee in freedom and peace, grant to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with thy gracious will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. That day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. To guard us he has set wall and ramparts about us. Open the gates. Let the upright nation come in. She, the faithful one, whose mind is steadfast, who keeps the peace because she trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the everlasting rock. He has brought low those who lived high up in the steep citadel. He brings it down, brings it down to the ground, flings it down in the dust. The feet of the lowly, the footsteps of the poor trample on it. The path of the upright person is straight. You smooth the way of the upright. Following the path of your judgments, 
We hoped in you, O Lord. Your name, your memory are all my soul desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You must obey the governing authorities. Since all government comes from God, the civil authorities were appointed by God. And so anyone who resists authority is rebelling against God's decision. And such an act is bound to be punished. Good behavior is not afraid of magistrates. Only criminals have anything to fear. If you want to live without being afraid of authority, you must live honestly, and authority may even honor you. The state is there to serve God for your benefit. If you break the law, however, you may well have fear. The bearing of the word has its significance. The authorities are there to serve God. They carry out God's revenge by punishing wrongdoers. You must obey, therefore, not only because you are afraid of being punished, but also for conscience' sake. This is also the reason why you must pay taxes, since all government officials are God's officers. They serve God by collecting taxes. Pay every government official what he has a right to ask, whether it be direct tax or indirect, fear or honor. Avoid getting into debt. Accept the debt of mutual love. If you love your fellow men and women, you have carried out your obligations. All the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbor. That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you. Next, they sent to Jesus some Pharisees and some Herodians to catch him out in what he said. These came and said to him, Master, we know you are an honest man, that you are not afraid of anyone, because a person's rank means nothing to you, and that you teach the way of God in all honesty. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay, yes or no? Seeing through their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why do you set this trap for me? Hand me a denarius and let me see it. They handed him one, and he said, Whose head is on this? Whose name? Caesar's, they told him. Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. This reply took them completely by surprise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is Inauguration Day in our country, in the United States of America. It is a day of celebration. It is a day that harkens back to the earliest traditions of our country, the peaceful transfer of power from one administration to another, beginning with President Washington stepping aside peacefully 
and the first President Adams taking the oath of office. It is fair to say that this inauguration day in the year 2021 is like no other inauguration day, at least in our memory. Today's inauguration takes place in the backdrop of a global pandemic which has just killed its 400,000th person in this nation alone. This inauguration day takes place in the backdrop of an insurrection in our nation's capital earlier this month. This inauguration day takes part in the backdrop of heightened security in our nation's capital, with those closest to the president being vetted specifically to make sure that they are not white supremacists or other insurrectionists who will be too close to the seat of power. This day takes place in the backdrop of our state houses throughout our nation also being guarded with extra security to prevent against any insurrection and rebellion. This is a celebratory day that takes on a penitential tone, a tone of repentance, a tone of humility, hence the Lenten array, hence the purple altar setting and garments that I am wearing today. Before we celebrate, we have to atone, we have to repent, we have to humble ourselves before Almighty God. Our scripture readings this morning lay out visions of God's relationship with the state, with the city, with the nation. Remembering, of course, that in the days of Isaiah and in the days of Jesus and Paul, there was a closer relationship, perhaps, between what we might call today church and state. The wall of separation did not exist. For the people of Israel, even if they had a king, the Lord was the supreme ruler. And in Jesus' day, the emperor of Rome was given divine qualities, church and state not so very far apart in those days. In our nation, there is a wall of separation between church and state. That wall of separation means that the state may not impinge upon the right of the church to organize. The state may not set apart a particular religion that is favored or condemn a religion that is unfavored. We have the freedom to worship. We also have the freedom as people of faith to weigh in on our nation's policies. We do this not exclusively as a voice of Christians who want to set up a kind of theocracy, but we do this because for people of faith, for Christians, or people of any faith tradition, our faith shapes our citizenship, our faith shapes our residency in our nation, in our state, in our city. Our faith shapes how we approach our polity, how we approach our politics, how we approach our relationship one with another, not only as fellow children of God, but also as fellow residents of a polis, of a civil or a civic state. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the righteous, the righteous city will take its place in that great city of God. Isaiah tells us that the people who follow God, the people who are righteous in their dealings one with another will be welcomed in through the gates. And Isaiah tells us that those who have abused their power, those who have sat high on the citadels and who have not followed the righteousness of God will be cast down and others will trample over them to take their place. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans casts a rather sympathetic light on civic government. Paul tells us that all who are placed in civil authority over us are placed there by God, and that we as citizens of whatever polis, whatever municipality, whatever governing authority we find ourselves under, we must obey as if we were obeying God. 
This is a passage, this letter to the Romans, that has been abused sometimes to justify obedience to states that are clearly oppressive, oppressive especially of those on the margins, those who are defenseless. This is a passage that has been used to undergird the worst impulses of government and citizenry. But Paul, you'll notice, tempers, tempers his call for obedience with the pronouncement of love. Paul brings out that second great commandment, the one that Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. You may have heard at the end of this great litany of our obedience to the state, Paul calls us to love, which suggests that if the state and its officers are not acting in love, in forbearance, in generosity, in compassion, in mercy, in justice for those for whom they have authority over. If our leaders are not acting in love, then they're not acting as God would have them act. That should give us pause as we think about any of our elected officials, anyone who is in civic authority over us. Are they acting out of love and justice and mercy? Are they acting in the best interests of the weakest among us? Are they lifting up those who are oppressed by their policies and their pronouncements? And if they are not, perhaps they are not acting in God's interest or in ours, but in their own. And finally, in the passage from Mark, might be a counterpoint to Paul's passage from the letter to the Romans. Paul is urging us to pay taxes. Jesus is too. Pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and pay to God what belongs to God. It was an answer that stymied those who were trying to trap Jesus, trying to set Jesus up to see if his loyalties were divided between temple and between Rome. Jesus, as he so often does, deftly wove his way through there, leaving his opponents grasping for air, grasping for straws that are blowing about in the wind, their certainty dashed. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. On this inauguration day, this strangest inauguration day in any of our memories. As we say farewell to one administration, and as we welcome another in what we hope in these remaining few hours is a peaceful transfer of power. May we as people of faith, may we as followers of Jesus Christ know where our ultimate allegiance lies. Our allegiance lies with God. Our allegiance lies with Jesus Christ, who came to set a new way for us, a way of love, a way of humility, a way of self-sacrifice. Jesus' way of self-sacrifice for our salvation, and he suggests then our way of self-sacrifice for our nation's salvation, for the well-being of all. May we pray for the well-being of the new administration as it takes the oath of office at noon today. May its policies, may its pronouncements lift up the poorest and the weakest among us. May its policies and pronouncements put the way of love before the way of hate. May its policies and pronouncements not be particularly Christian or particularly faith-based in any way, shape, or form other than being an administration of love and peace and justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 326, we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. Continuing with the confession of sin. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and to bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's, especially on this day of national importance. It is good that we are together as the church to ask God's mercy and forgiveness and forbearance and grace upon our nation and all who live inside its borders and for all who live throughout the world. As for what this nation does affects everyone around the globe. As I prepare the altar for Holy Communion, if you are worshiping God with us this morning, either on this live stream or later on on the recording, I invite you to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion that we will share. I invite you to receive it spiritually. In your participation in this Mass, in this celebration of Holy Eucharist, you have prepared yourself to receive the grace and gift of the sacrament. When it is time to receive Holy Communion, accept Jesus' invitation and the grace found in the sacrament will enter you and fill you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
We continue with Eucharistic Prayer 1, page 333. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to you. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the peace. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy. mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy. mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. By the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people. They are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing, love, and mercy of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.